On January 28, 2022, about 6.37 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the Fern Hollow Bridge in Pittsburgh, Allegheny County, Pennsylvania, collapsed. At the time of the collapse, there were four passenger vehicles and an articulated bus on the bridge. A fifth passenger vehicle drove off the east bridge abutment after the collapse began and came to rest on its roof. Four people were injured and there were no fatalities. The bridge, which was located about five miles east of downtown Pittsburgh, ran east and west and carried Forbes Avenue traffic over Frick Park. The bridge opened in 1973 with two lanes of traffic in each direction. The bridge was 447 feet long and the main bridge structure consisted of two large girders, called frame girders, running east and west, supported by four rigidly connected legs and abutments at the east and west ends. Each leg was about 60 feet long and oriented at an angle with respect to the frame girders. Each pair of adjacent legs were connected by cross bracing. This design is referred to as a K-frame due to the way the frame girders and legs form a shape similar to an elongated K when placed on its side. Each leg was constructed of welded steel plates forming an I-shaped cross section. The two flanges were the main load carrying parts of the leg. Each leg narrowed from top to bottom and then tapered to a shoe that rested on a reinforced concrete thrust block. On the inside of each leg, longitudinal and transverse stiffeners were welded to the web and flanges to resist buckling. The outward sides of the legs did not have these stiffeners, but like the insides of the legs, included a transverse tie plate and longitudinal bearing stiffeners running the length of the shoe. The tapered legs caused compression forces in the flanges to push outward. This outward push was resisted by the transverse tie plate and the web at the top of the shoe, which placed the transverse tie plates in tension. By design, the transverse tie plates were thicker than the transverse leg stiffeners to carry the forces at this critical location in the leg. The bridge was constructed of uncoated weathering steel, an alloy designed to form a protective surface layer of rust called a patina. The patina develops over time through repeated wet-dry cycles. Because a properly formed patina resists corrosion, using this material eliminated the need for painting or coating. This is an overhead view of the bridge taken shortly after it collapsed. A Port Authority articulated transit bus was traveling from west to east on the bridge prior to the collapse. It was equipped with video cameras, including one facing forward at the front of the bus and one facing rearward along the right side of the bus. In the rearward facing video, the beginning of the collapse can be seen as the railing near the west end of the bridge begins to drop. As the west end of the bridge fell, video from the forward-facing camera shows the east end of the bridge still intact. This video evidence indicated that the collapse started near the west end of the bridge. The Fern Hollow Bridge was inspected every two years in compliance with the National Bridge Inspection Standards. Starting in 2014, the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation required the bridge be inspected every year due to its condition rating and 26-ton weight restriction, also known as a posted load limit. Inspection reports over the years repeatedly documented clogged drains in areas where leaves or other debris collected, allowing water and road salts to run down the bridge legs and accumulate on the legs near the transverse tie plates. This accumulation of water and debris on the bridge legs prevented these areas from drying, which, in turn, prevented the protective patina from forming on the uncoated weathering steel. This lack of patina and a continued accumulation of water and debris ultimately led to extensive corrosion damage and loss of material, or section loss, 
on critical areas of the bridge legs, including the transverse tie plates. The inspection reports documented some of this section loss, which progressed to the point that there was thinning of and holes through numerous structural elements on all four legs. In 2009, due to corrosion of the legs cross bracing, steel cables were added to both sides of the bridge legs, connecting the top of one leg with the bottom of the other leg, forming an X. The cables were intended to be used as a temporary measure until the rigid cross bracing could be replaced with new cross bracing of the same kind. This was never completed. Similarly, a rust inhibiting coating was to be applied to the bridge legs and lower bracing members, but this was also not completed. Post-collapse examination revealed that while all four legs sustained damage, the southwest leg sustained the most damage, including significant fracturing and deformation. On the southwest leg, both the web and transverse tie plate were severely corroded. The thickness of the transverse tie plate was substantially reduced near the hole in the web. These two images, taken from inspection reports, show the same hole in the southwest leg in 2013 and 2021. In 2021, the hole in the web above the tie plate was visibly larger than it was in 2013. Following the collapse, three-dimensional scanning was used to document section loss on the legs of the bridge. These scanned images confirmed the reduced thickness of the southwest leg and transverse tie plate as shown in the photos. The yellow areas indicate where the steel was only 25% of its original thickness. During the collapse, the bottom flange, highlighted in blue, separated from the web and the transverse tie plate, and the flange curled back onto itself, as shown here. The bottom of the leg also bent approximately 90 degrees, changing the orientation of the shoe. While these deformations are being shown separately for illustrative purposes, they would have occurred simultaneously during the collapse of the bridge. Post-collapse photographs of these damaged portions of the leg have been superimposed. Taken together, the observed post-collapse damage to the bridge, the reduced thickness of the southwest leg's transverse tie plate as documented in the inspection reports and 3D scanning, and the video footage from the bus cameras indicate that the collapse of the Fern Hollow Bridge began when the transverse tie plate and the southwest bridge leg failed due to extensive corrosion and section loss. On February 21, 2024, the National Transportation Safety Board determined the probable cause of the collapse of the Fern Hollow Bridge was the failure of the transverse tie plate on the southwest leg of the bridge, a fracture critical member, also called a non-redundant steel tension member, due to corrosion and section loss resulting from the City of Pittsburgh's failure to act on repeated maintenance and repair recommendations from inspection reports. Contributing to the collapse were the poor quality of inspections, the incomplete identification of the bridge's fracture-critical members, non-redundant steel tension members, and the incorrect load rating calculations for the bridge. Also contributing to the collapse was insufficient oversight of the City of Pittsburgh's Bridge Inspection Program by the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation. We address corrosion resulting from a lack of maintenance on uncoated weathering steel bridges in an interim report published in May 2023 and issued safety recommendation H2313 asking the Federal Highway Administration to develop a risk-based, data-driven process to help bridge owners identify, prioritize, and perform previously identified follow-up actions documented in inspections of bridges with uncoated weathering steel components. Additionally, we issued 11 new recommendations to the Federal Highway Administration, the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation, the City of Pittsburgh, and the American Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials. One recommendation to the Federal Highway Administration is to establish a process for targeted reviews to evaluate how bridge owners decide to conduct load ratings of deteriorating bridges 
and to evaluate inspection reports on deteriorating bridges to ensure that load rating calculations are correct. We further recommended the Federal Highway Administration incorporate the findings from this investigation into bridge inspection training courses and that they use the Fern Hollow Bridge as a case study to emphasize the need to complete maintenance and repairs identified in inspections, ensure that bridge inspections are properly performed, correctly identify fracture critical members, and correctly calculate load ratings. We also recommended that the Federal Highway Administration and the American Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials update the Bridge Inspector's Reference Manual and the Manual for Bridge Evaluation to include guidance that addresses the identification of tension components in non-redundant steel members. If enacted, these recommendations will prevent a similar collapse from happening in the future. All the recommendations from this investigation and their status can be found on ntsb.gov using the associated recommendation numbers. For additional information on this investigation, including the docket of reports and the recommendations issued, visit ntsb.gov and search for Fern Hollow or the accident number HWY22MH. 003.